Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here, TGIF. It is Friday as the recording of this, February 17th, 2023. I have a piping hot caffeinated beverage and I am joined, tagging along today, is Crazy Joe and his adventures. Crazy Joe's adventures. Crazy Joe adventures with a K. Crazy Joe with a K. Yep. You left your coffee in the car. I left it in the car. I left it in the yeah, car. I, I also have a piping hot beverage. We are standing in the stomping grounds of Bruce Springsteen. You picked me up over on the Jersey Philly line and said, would you like to go see the Clerks spots? And I said, yes. What else are we going to say? Uh, some spots from Clerks, Chasing Amy, and uh, we're going to do Asbury Park. Yeah, I said, well, we're going to be in that area, the Kevin Smith area. Might as well go by Asbury Park. Bruce Springsteen stomping ground, also one of my favorite bands, The Bouncing Souls. I'm inviting you to join me and Crazy Joe. Shall you? Now we're starting here in this town on the corner of E Street and 10th Avenue. Bruce Springsteen wrote a song called 10th Avenue Freeze Out and of course his band, the E Street Band. So some say this corner is very pivotal in Bruce Springsteen history. And it is an overcast, kind of semi-dreary day. But there is a guitar over here which is part of the Bell, was it Bellman, Belmar. I'm glad it says it on the sign because I totally forgot. We're a little bit south of Asbury Park, but this is the Belmar Public Library where there is a replica of Springsteen's guitar right here, oversized Fender that someone has placed here. So we're gonna start off here and then from here, we're just gonna see what we can find and head up to Asbury Park. And then from there, where are the clerk spots? Precisely. The store, the quick stop, is in Leonardo. Uh, a lot of other locations are in Red Bank. That's where they shot uh, like some of the locations from Chasing Amy. So we're going to do that. Also, I was noticing your shirt. When you take me back to my hotel a little bit later, I am staying very close to Haddonfield, New Jersey, which is the inspiration for the name of Haddonfield, Illinois. So we can, swing, we can swing by that on the, on the way back too, which is like, we took about an hour to get on. We're looking at the map. Evidently, this is called Shark River. I mean, the Crazy Joe Mobile. Is that what you call your? I'm gonna call your car the Crazy Joe Mobile. Sure. It is very foggy today. We are looking for the Stone Pony, which I should remember serves me correctly, or memory serves me correctly. We'll have the Welcome to Asbury Park sign on the side of it. I think it might be over here. Oh no, that's Asbury Lanes. We gotta go over there too though. All right, here's the stage entrance of the Stone Pony. Synonymous with Springsteen. Now this is not the spot I was thinking of. I'm thinking of another spot that has like a, kind of a very distinctive face on the side of it. Could be a different venue. So we're gonna find where that was. But the Stone Pony, it's definitely pretty legendary. It's right here on the boardwalk. Now yesterday, I was in Atlantic City boardwalk, which I had never been to, but I had been to the Asbury Park boardwalk years ago. In fact, I was in a band that we played, Asbury Lanes. We're gonna go by there too. And on the side is a pony made out of stone. That's the stone pony. Get a view of the Atlantic coastline. You're not allowed to bike here past midnight. And no dogs from May to September. No dogs allowed. Signs, signs, everywhere is signs. Blocking up the cigarette. Has it has the lyrics go? I don't remember that one. Remember the song, the Tesla yeah, cover? I know the song, I, I remember. I mean... All right, it's obviously winter. Not a lot of people out. It's also very rainy, overcast, dreary, but there's a nice little vibe out here with the rain. Here's the shore. It, it smells more Jersey Shore than I'm, I'm even used to because of the fog, it bringing the, that salt water scent in. It smells like Jersey? Well, it's that salt water yeah. beach smell, but it's it's more pronounced due to the, to the fog and the... Yeah. yeah, it's like a whole vibe. I did a quick little search, not just the Springsteen history here, but I didn't realize that John Bon Jovi got his start here too. Nothing's really going on here right now, but it is kind of interesting to think how many legendary performers 
walk through this stage entrance right here. This is the stage door. This is what I was thinking of. The Wonder Bar with the Tunnel of Love. There's actually a place in St. Pete when I go over to Tropicana Field to watch the Rays. There's a place, probably not just St. Pete and Tampa, but other places have emulated this and put their own little spin on this. This is a very notable piece of artwork here. There's some geese over here, which I've learned my lesson in back in the day. You do not want to approach or mess with geese. Some of them are not too friendly. And since tonight, you know, as I'm filming this, is the 17th, a couple days after Valentine's Day is when they're having their party here at the Lanes. There used to be a, a venue over here, an extended venue that stretched out into this side, but that was torn down many, 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 many years ago, about, I don't know, probably 12 years ago or so, I was in a band and we played here. Of course, this place is like synonymous with the Bouncing Souls. In fact, they even kind of immortalize it in one of their songs, stepping out of Asbury Lanes in the Midnight Snow, I believe is the, the lyrics. But you can see the old neon up here, which the neon's been removed, it's just a sign. I think it's been repainted. It looks a lot nicer than it did last time I was here. They've kind of added this ramp. They've also added a new staircase there. And I think this is also where the singer from the Atari's kind of had a little bit of a a little bit of a, a breakdown and got mad at his bandmates like 10 or 12 years ago when they were playing inside of here. This manhole says cable vision. What if it's like cable wiring down in there? So we asked to the, one of the guys out front, there's an event tonight, obviously this event, so we're not allowed to go inside. The diner is open. He said they completely remodeled the inside, so it probably doesn't look any. The stage is off to the far end instead of being in the middle of the bowling alley where it used to be. You see a bunch of lanes, stage, and a bunch of more lanes, and they've kind of changed it around according to him. We're now walking back up to the boardwalk, and even though Madame Marie's is still here, they have a different tenant. It's not the original Madame Marie, but doing a quick little research, evidently this is the oldest vendor, oldest operating vendor on the boardwalk here in Asbury Park up until 2008, but she started in 1932 telling fortunes since 32, and since the original, Madame Marie has passed on, said that she told the fortune to Judy Garland and also Springsteen and stated when she read his fortune that he would become a huge success. He never forgot Madame Marie years later, which is kind of interesting. Springsteen was told he would become successful at Madame Marie's. Now, I do not know if this is the exact same spot as where this once was, but I saw this and said, oh, that looks kind of familiar. Look at this. Obviously she's not here today, or whoever is now operating Madame Marie's is not here. Is there someone in there? I don't think so. No, I think so. I think you gotta call a number. There's a crate in front of the door. This place at the moment, and it is because of the weather, it's a ghost town. Few people are deli making deliveries for some of the local bars around here, but other than that, not a whole heck of a lot of people out at this moment. This is the Patriarch Athena Goris 1, 86 to 72, also known as the Man of Love. And there's some, looks like the convention hall has been around for a while too, also known as a location for the Paramount Theater. But you got some, there's, there's like the Doors played here in 68. And then Kiss played here in the mid 70s. And I really like the, the ornate art, you know, uh, carvings up here. Obviously the album, Greetings from Asbury Park, Springsteen. I was think maybe I'm getting confused with the album cover and maybe there isn't a full mural here, but there are a big set of bat wings along the boardwalk. Or if they had a mural of it, it's been covered up. Also mentioning Bouncing Souls, they had an album called Ghosts on the Boardwalk and a song called Ghosts on the Boardwalk, which was written about this very boardwalk. However, the old boardwalk has been torn up and replaced with this new boardwalk. New boardwalk, new ghosts here in Asbury Park. I like the weather though. Kind of adds to the ambiance. All right, there's some artwork over here. There's Springsteen right there.
That's a pretty good piece of artwork right there. Over in the corner is James Brown. Or James Brown, not Brown. Brown over in the corner. Hot, hot tub. That was Eddie Murphy, right? Yeah. Saturday Night Live. <laughs> and as we're about to head out of town, I'm noticing there's some soul stuff over here as well in the shape of these little hearts. Some of their, some of their best songs. Well, they got a lot of good songs. Of course, Hopeless Romantic. I'm a hopeless romantic, you're just hopeless. True believers. And you're so rad. All good ones. As we're driving through here, I'm noticing, so you got the ocean right over here on the other side of this rock wall, but then the houses that are off to the side, they're not on stilts or anything. I'm used to seeing, you know, Florida shores where the houses are raised in, kind of, in case of flooding for a hurricane. But none of these are raised up. There's these like huge houses just feet from the shoreline. Now that one was raised up, but most of these other ones aren't. They're just right on the ground. Kind of bizarre. coming down right now. Can we go inside? Sure. I hope so, because it is raining right now. Oh, the quick stop. Oh my gosh. It's starting to pour. Look down here. So the last time I was here, like, was probably a decade ago. I went by, I did, in fact, I used to do the unedited videos. And right over here, the video store was still here. Or maybe it was here. Was this the video store? Yeah. So in uh, where the the body mark says tattoo piercing place. I looked in the window that this is a decade ago and you can see the old VHS were still in there. They've turned it into the Smog Castle. This is where Kevin Smith does podcasts now, right, right, right in there. In the old video store. No kidding. Remember the scene in the original clerks, they were on the roof. And the shop is still, what were they doing on the roof? They were play, playing were they, hockey. Playing hockey, that's what it was. It's been a while since I've seen the first one. All right, let's go in before I get my camera ruined. Raining out here. We're going into the quick stop. They don't have the sign out front. What did the sign say? I assure you we're open. Yeah. Right, we have just arrived at the quick stop and it is raining. So we're going to get inside, but this is it. This is There's a bunch of markings on the ground down here. People put their... Thank you. Hey. Sorry. You're blind coming yeah. in. Yeah, how's it going? <laughs> Yeah. All right, we're in here. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, no video? All right, we just told we weren't allowed to film inside, but it said we can't take photos. Mostly, I think, because there was other customers, locals in there. We didn't want. I, I'm not really sure what the reason is, but obviously said no filming inside, but we could take photos. So I got a few photos I'm going to show as well. So he was saying the new movie was also filmed. I did not see Clerks Three. Yeah, I, I actually had heard that there was a, there was a, a set built to look like it, but I guess I heard wrong. Yeah. Now Clerks Two was filmed in Buena Park, California. They built uh, right beside Knott's Berry Farm. They built uh, the, movies? The, the movies from Clerks Two. Oh, you know what? This actually does show it right here. It does have the, uh, I assure you. There's Jay right there. The animated I don't see Silent Bob anywhere. Here's a nice little relic out front. Oh, look at that. I thought it was Bigfoot at first, but it's an alien. This is pretty cool. I have to admit, I'm not the hugest Kevin Smith movie fan. I have met the guy a couple times. He's awesome. Very, very cool, down to earth. He's been in a few of my videos. I, I, I respect the original Clerks. Really like Chasing Amy. Really like Mallrats. Kind of like Tusk, because he did a horror film. But all in all, I just like the, the, definitely respect how he started his career more than the film. So, a lot of people love Kevin Smith films. I wouldn't say I love them, 
but you know, I enjoy them from time to time. I think for me, I stated this 10 years ago when I was here, I really appreciate kind of how his work ethic was, how he, he maxed all his credit cards out to make clerks. Kind of similar to what I did when I started traveling in my van. I quit my job, I did have some credit cards, I utilized those for to get around the country when I was filming my videos originally. Didn't make a profit for a very long time and didn't really know where I was going with my career. It has now become like YouTube has become a thing. And in a lot of ways, he was the same way. He took all his money. I think it was three credit cards that he maxed out. I'm just kind of going off of memory to make clerks. Filming it in here, this was an active convenience store at the time, filled it during off hours. And the movie became successful. And the rest is history. All right, Joe was just telling me, so the video store has been removed. All of this is the podcast area. So it stretches all the way down to the other end and they have removed the walls from that store to this store. And it goes all the way over to here. So really you just got the quick stop here on the end. And then every other former business is now the podcast area. So he'll show up here and do his podcast. Kind of like he does at the Scum and Villainy Cantina in Hollywood. He does it there sometimes too. Yeah. He also he also bought a movie theater in the area. He owns his own movie theater now. Should we go by there? Yeah, I think it's by the comic book store. All right. That is pretty dang cool. I just love stuff like this. Because obviously when he was filming this, he had no clue that it was going to become, you know, what it is today. Not just clerks, but just his stuff in general. So I'll just show a couple of the photos on my phone from inside the store. There's like the same coolers that the milk was in. And they have some merchandise in there too. And it's kind of neat, this counter that's in front. This is the same cooler in everything. Same glass cooler that was in the movie. All the movies. Right down there. They were standing behind it and all that. And this is the front entrance up. That's well, kind of cool. You just go in there. It was an active shop then. It's an active store now. Here's another angle there looking across at the milk coolers. And up top. Are you sure you were open? And then out front which I showed in the video. And here's another Springsteen artistic rendering. Oh, check it out. There's De Niro, Deer Hunter. So we are now in the very quaint community. Okay, I'm drawing a blank. What's the name of this town? Red Bank. Red Bank. It was Red something, Red Bank. You got the jewelers downstairs, or over there. And there's a comic book shop here. Jay and Silent Bob's Secret Stash. The Ninja Turtles out front. Oh, do they have some they have some props out front? Check it out. Clerks 3. They want to be in a movie flyer. Inconvenience. Yeah. Temporarily closed. Be after be open after first period. There's the boom box. From Dogma. There's the, the Jesus. Hey, check it out, you got Clerks 3 here too. And then also has the secret stash. The original business that was here was called Miles. I really like all the stuff in the window, it's pretty cool. Oh, is that from Tusk? Oh, is that Tusk himself? No way. The Tusk was a horror film that Kevin Smith made. A lot of people realize that Kevin Smith was the one that made it. Had Justin Long in it as well, who Justin Long's in a lot of kind of bizarre horror films. Jeepers Creepers is another one he was in. All right, after stepping inside, my first thought, definitely a lot more in here than I was expecting to be here. I thought maybe all the props and whatnot be in the, in the front of the window. They have quite a bit of stuff. Obviously it's a comic book shop, so they have lots of comics. They have lots of merchandise and whatnot for sale all, all kind of scattered through there. Like the movie sign, and they even have the, the, the Jesus from Dogma. We call him Buddy Jesus. Buddy Christ. Buddy Christ from Dogma. From Dogma. Yeah. And I didn't realize that, but the, the person working in there was telling us that the, the sign for a quick stop was the sign. Like, 
Kevin Smith bought it from the store and replaced it. So the one that's in here is the original sign. And he got the key to the city back in 2017, I believe, where the comic book shop is located. They gave him the key to the city. So that's in here too as well. We're stopping off. Let's see if you're into comic books or if you're anything into any of the Kevin Smith films. Stop off inside here and check out some of the some of the stuff from the movie, screen new stuff from the films. It's located at 65 Broad Street. That's the address. Now walking up to the music shop from Chasing Amy. There's a couple different scenes filmed up here. This isn't too far from the comic book shop. We had to move the car down from here, parked behind us, and now we're walking back up. Oh, this is pretty cool, it still looks the same. It still says Jack's Music Shop up top. Oh, check it out. And of course, Springsteen. <laughs> Springsteen in the window. This is a tie in Kevin Smith Springsteen day. So this is their apartment right here, right? Yep, that was uh, where Ben Affleck and Jason Lee lived in the movie. I think I just like Jason Lee so much. I think that's why I like all the Kevin Smith movies because <laughs> Jason Lee's in. Those are my favorites. Especially, man, he's so good at Mall Rats. And Chasing Amy. I, th I think I just figured out which Kevin Smith movies I like the most is because Jason Lee is in them. <laughs> it just hit me. All right, Joe has found the scene here where they're both sitting in the same spot. You don't really see this pipe, though camera angle is kind of like that but it still looks the same it was just like a kind of a holding long shot there where kind of without that angle we have now commuted over to Atlantic Highlands where a movie theater that Kevin Smith bought Smod Castle Cinemas is right across the street and rumor has it he has an apartment up top so when he's in town he'll stay at that apartment right up there there's someone up there and they do play films here in fact tonight Ant-Man and Wasp is playing, but they have, it's an active theater that he bought and renamed and reopened. So Tarantino has the new Beverly and Kevin Smith has, what do they call this theater? The Smod Castle. The Smod Castle. And he's picked posters from all his movies. There you go, Chasing Amy right there. Zach and Mary. Clerks. And then, of course, Kevin Smith was not in this, but... He, he was a producer on it, though. Oh, was he? And then Ben Affleck and Matt Damon left him out of the Oscar speech, and he gave them a real hard time about it. Ah. This is like a wall of posters through here. Get mauled. This place is like the mecca of Kevin Smith. <laughs> It was nice of them to let us in here, too. And here are some stills. Is this from Clerks 3 or from the original Clerks? It looks like original Clerks. Yeah, that's the first one. There they are, standing outside the wall. And then inside the store itself. Pretty neat. Okay, we just asked, and evidently this is the motel where the cast was staying when they were filming Maw Rats. Jason Lee took this, right? Yep, that's what. Here's a really good video I saw online. Jason Lee's really into photography. He still goes around with a regular camera and will take photos like this. It's like a cool like 10, 15 minute documentary on him going around taking photos and how he lines everything up. He's just really into photography. So that's kind of cool to see that. Because that was, you know, a couple decades ago. But he's still doing it to this day from as far as I know, or at least when that little short documentary came out. All right, I gotta say, that was a lot cooler going in there than I thought it would be. In fact, even going in the comic book shop was awesome. The comic book shop and the Smod, Ca Smod Castle Cinemas, both just layered with history of Kevin Smith and his films. Pretty neat. And they're both, all the places have been really nice as far as going inside and looking at everything. And they're remodeling the apartment up there. There's people remodeling up there. Maybe that's the one that Kevin rents out or stays in when he's in town. We are now en route. Been driving for a while. Another 
Right, driving for the last 40 minutes or so. We're now about 20 minutes to a half hour from Haddonfield. Not Haddonfield, Illinois, the fictional home of Michael Myers, but the real Haddonfield where Deborah Hill grew up and they used the name in Halloween. It's also raining. We have arrived in Haddonfield. We're wondering if there's a Myers in here possibly. We thought maybe Deborah Hill would be laid to rest here in Haddonfield, New Jersey. But her body was donated to science. Science! You know, in a way, that almost kind of looks like the Myers house. Kind of, well, no. Kind of, sort of, not really. Maybe I just wanted to. Oh, that looks like Amityville Horror. You want to do the line? Uh, Michael, don't go back to Haddonfield. Leave those poor people in peace. I wonder what this place is like on October 31st every year. You think people dress up as Michael and walk around? I don't know. You, probably, there's, you, you might get annoyed by it. You never know. Maybe. Maybe not. They might embrace it. Don't go to Haddonfield. <laughs> we did. We did. We're going to head to one more Jersey spot. Cheese steak time. What's the place? Donkeys. A lot of people have suggested donkeys to me. So yep. we're gonna go to Donkeys in Camden, Camden, which is about a couple miles from here. So if if we never see us again, you know <laughs> why. <laughs> you see the sun is setting over there in the distance. We were just discussing. No better time to go to Camden than at, night, than at nightfall. <laughs> like literally the sun's going down. That is a beautiful sun. <laughs> we're just like, <laughs> you all right over there? You laughing too much? I gotta keep my eyes open. <laughs> Look, you can even see Philly off in the distance. Camden. After dark. They're open till six. Got a half hour till they close. It's beautiful with that. You just laugh. I've never seen you laugh so much. You like the Camden after dark? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have arrived in Camden. Straight ahead is Donkey's Place. Highly recommended by many, many people. Including Anthony Bourdain, who said, well, this is a new day. So we're, this, we're not too far from Haddonfield. Historic Haddon Avenue in Donkey. Donkey, no, no, in Camden. Camden. I meant to say donkeys. Donkey, New Jersey. <laughs> Camden, New Jersey, going to donkeys. Yeah, but speaking of Anthony Bourdain, he said this was one of his favorite Philly cheesesteak places, located on the corner of Liberty and Haddon Ave. Even though this is not in Philadelphia, so technically not a Philly cheesesteak, it's a Jersey cheesesteak. And I'm excited to try this. You have Donkey's Bar with the Pepsi logo on it here. And then you have Donkey's Steak Place, or Donkey's Place with steaks. And there's even Donkey's Place parking. You got an ATM here. And I like the vibe of this with the neon in the window there. And Donkey's Place parking. Going in. Gonna get a Philly cheesesteak. The Jersey style Philly cheesesteak from Donkey's Place. Very, 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 very popular and very, very famous for their cheese steaks. The gloves? The gloves. Yeah. All right, now come over this side. What's up? They're his. Daryl Biggs, Golden Gloves. Oh, okay. No kidding. Next to Dean Martin. Yeah, Dean Martin right there. 
Sugar Ray's gloves over there. No, that's my. Can you see them? No. Oh, in the corner. Where? Wait, wait, I'm not looking in the right place. Over here? Oh, over there. Right there. See that sign right there? Yeah. <laughs> ah, no kidding. That's my mom. <laughs> and my aunt in the middle, and then one of their friends. Come oh, that's cool. Right over here. Wow, that's awesome. That's a whole photo. That's exact same sign. The exact I mean, same sign. Sugar Ray's fucking speed bag? That's Sugar Ray Leonard's glove. Where? Right, right there. there. Yeah, right, right there in the case. That's Sugar Ray Leonard's glove. I never know that. We got fries and two cheese sticks that we're going to be consuming. And they have a sign on the way in that says F Long Rolls. That shirt, a donkey shirt's been in all those countries it's colored in. All those states and countries. Oh, the jaw shirt? No, a donkey shirt. Oh, the don uh, a donkey shirt, gotcha. Yes, it's been photographed in one of those states. That's great. Countries and states and whatever. How long have you guys been open? 1943. 1943. That's a long time. It's a long time. Yeah. Third generation. You've been highly recommended Thank from a lot of people, so we're excited. Shirt up in 30 feet from the air. That's great. See people just take pictures all over the place. Thanks for all the info. They are really they're awesome here. They're giving us all kind of this is this is like a whole book on who's on the wall. In Donkey's place. Here's Camden High, 81. Robert E. Johnson. There's Trejo. Maybe Trejo was here? He has his own place too. In Hollywood, I've eaten at his place. In fact, when I ate there, he was there. Thank you. Thank you. Oh man, look at this. Oh my gosh. What the heck am I witnessing right now? So I asked, I haven't had provolone yet on a Philly cheese or a cheesesteak. You know, it's a Jersey, Jersey cheese. And they said, no, no, we don't do provolone here. They said only American. So I'm going with an American and you can see, I don't know if you saw the shirt up front, but it said F long rolls. Oh, yes. I'm using the term F lightly. They actually <laughs> spelled it out. Yeah, it's the only one you get on a Kaiser. So we got onions on there. Oh, it looks like they're uh, what kind of they're like? What kind of onions are these? These are not like traditional fried onions. Fried onions. They're fried onions. Yeah. So fried onions. The cheese, like sautéed onions, kind of. Now, now this is a bit of a messy cheesesteak because it's open on all sides. I cannot explain how hospitable this place is. Oh, absolutely. So. Uh, we said we're gonna get it to go, so we're gonna eat on your car outside because it's quieter. They had music playing, you know, bar music, and they said, "Oh, we'll turn the music off for you." They just turned the music off. What place would do that? Camden. Yeah. I'm going in. Fuck. That was getting good. So hot. That's more. That's really good, but different. It feels like you're eating a different kind of sandwich because you're eating it with a different type of bread. Absolutely. Like it feels like you're not eating it on a hoagie. It's kind of strange. I don't know how I feel about the onions. The onions are kind of throwing me off. Have you you not had onions on any of the other sandwiches? I have, but they're not like this. This is more of like a caramelized oh, oh yeah. onion. Not a traditional onion. This is more of a caramelized. It's different. It almost has like a roast beef kind of feel to it, doesn't it? It tastes more like a roast beef kind of sandwich. Right? Mm. It's good, but it's kind of messing with my head. <laughs> the texture of the meat and the caramelized onions. And the bread is kind of messing with my head. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like I'm eating a Philly cheesesteak. Yeah, it's very different. You like it? Absolutely. Or I drink a lot of piping hot caffeinated beverages. That is the most piping hot 
sandwich I've probably ever eaten in my life. <laughs> it is scaldingly fresh. I like this place. It's pretty good. The onions and the bread are definitely different though. Absolutely. This is the uh, the non-Philly cheesesteak. This is, this is a Camden cheesesteak. Camden cheesesteak. <laughs> yep. And I cannot stress how nice they were here. The onions are different. I don't know if I like the onions on that chili cheese type. Mm. Do you like the style of onions? I, I do. I, I'm a big onion guy though. I love onions. Do you like caramelized onions like this as opposed to just regular onions? I do. Okay. I'm I like regular onions too though. <laughs> I, just, I just love onions. I think I'd like this more if it didn't have the onions. I think that's the right word, caramelized. And I also should say it's very, very filling. I've only eaten about half of it. I'm already starting to get full. This thing is a beast load of meat. <laughs> it's a lot of meat and it has the, what are they, poppy seeds? What is it, what's the seeds on top yeah, of that? Poppy, poppy seeds. seeds? I don't think we even really needed the fries. Because yeah, this is a meal not. and a half right here. It's a lot of food on there. All right, now exiting out of Donkey's place. That was awesome. It's kind of dark from over here. I'm trying to get an angle of it from across the way. That was really an experience. I'm not, I would definitely say that's probably not one of my favorite cheesesteaks I've ever had. It was unique. But the experience in there was awesome. They, everyone in there that worked in there, it was a, just a cool vibe. Absolutely. All right, Donkey's Place. Achieved. Camden, New Jersey. A Jersey cheesesteak. Not a Philly cheesesteak, a Jersey cheesesteak. And that's going to do it for today. We did a lot today. Crazy yes, job. we did. We covered some ground. A lot of ground. Thanks for driving. Absolutely. To get in focus here. Check out Crazy Joe Adventures on YouTube. YouTube's own Crazy Joe. Not Crazy Joe's. Right? Cra yeah, cra Crazy Joe Adventures with, with a, a K. With a K on YouTube. We did a lot. Yes, we did. I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is over. I'm full.